Hi, this is Jamie with Stonemeyer Games, and I'm here today to talk about my favorite game mechanism in a non-tabletop game, but how it relates to tabletop game design. That game is Fantasy Baseball. Fantasy Baseball is an activity that I participated in for about a dozen years now. I'm not even a huge baseball fan, but I love Fantasy Baseball. And the reason that I love it. I mean, I, there are a lot of different reasons I love it. I like getting together with friends to, to talk about baseball. I like the trades, the engagement, the interaction, and all that. But the best part of the season is always the draft. At the beginning of the season, I get together with anyone who's in St. Louis, and everyone else is just on their computers around the country and around the world, and we each pick players one by one until we form a, a 21 person, 21 player roster. Uh, and we start out the season with that roster. I love the draft out of the five or six months of the season. This three-hour period is the best part of the, of the game itself because you get to start over with a, sl with a blank slate. You can do whatever you want. You, can, you remember the players that you had last year and you look at all these new players that have, that have improved or have joined the league, the rookies and whatnot, and you get to put them on your team and form this new team that's never been created in the same way in, in history ever, for, at least for you. This part is so much fun, and we can connect this to pretty much any board game where you start the board game with something completely different from the previous board game. You start with a blank slate, and you can do whatever you want with it, and that's great. I also like that there's, there's a moment, or really an extended moment after a draft, when you look at your fantasy baseball team, and all you see is potential. It's just a bunch of it's potential energy, essentially. You've created what you think is the best possible team for you to win this season. And everyone at, at this moment, I think everyone goes through it. You look at your team and you don't think there's any chance that you will lose any games ever because you've constructed the perfect team. It's the worst time to do trades because everyone thinks that every pick, every player on their team is the best at that point. So you can't, you can't trade with anybody. But it's this great moment of just uh, admiring this thing that you've created and dreaming about what they can do. And I think games can simulate this as well by having you create something at the beginning of the game that you can only see the potential of. Then of course you have to play it and see that that potential doesn't ever match what you dreamed it would be. But those moments of potential feel really good. There's also an element in the draft of pushing your luck. There are, uh, you might have a player that you really want and you think that he's gonna be drafted in the 10th round but then the eighth round comes around, he's still available, and you have to make the choice, do I, do I grab him now, do I take him early, or um, do I not? You're gauging how other people in the league, other managers, will value the same players that you under or overvalue. And so if you, you have to decide how early do I take them, you're pushing your luck as to whether or not you're going to get the players you want. And sometimes you take a player early, in the eighth round, even though it turns out that player wouldn't have been drafted until the 14th round or 15th round. And then you've kind of, you haven't wasted the pick. You have a player that you like, but you could have taken a much better player at that spot. This is a great mechanism for any game. Um, it happens in worker placement games a lot where you're, you're deciding, okay, does anyone else need to take that spot on the board or am I going to get to it first? Or can I just wait and take something else that's pretty good, not really that useful to me, but it's pretty good, might be helpful, more valuable to other players because they're not going to take this other spot that I really want. Now, with a strict comparison to fantasy baseball, I was thinking about games that, that kind of offer the full experience, especially when it comes to the draft, my, my favorite mechanism of fantasy baseball. And one of the best comparisons I could think of is Magic the Gathering. Um, especially the limited drafts in Magic the Gathering, which is it's similar to drafting games like in Seven Wonders, where you sit around a table, you open a bunch of packs, you pick a card out of your pack, and you pass it to the player on your left. And you do this around the table a couple times. You take a few picks out of every pack, and you open a total of three packs, booster packs. And what you're doing, you're, you're drafting. I mean, it's the same, same word. You're, you're still drafting um, cards into your deck, to form the deck that you're going to play the game with. And it's similar to fantasy baseball. I mean, it's all about potential at that point. You're, you're constructing a unique organism that you're going to play the game with. 
and in your head you you think it's awesome you think it's going to work out great it doesn't always work out that way but you're also while you're doing it you're keeping an eye on other players and what they're taking what they're picking the barrier to entry in a game like this or in a game like settlers of Catan, where your opening placement on the board is so important the downside is that if you don't make very good picks it could ruin the rest of the game experience that you have and that's the same in a fantasy baseball draft. If you don't if you don't pick the right players, uh, you can kind of fix it later. It's actually more forgiving than a Magic draft or, or Settlers of Catan because you can always pick up more players off the free agent market or trade for new players. But it's still pretty unforgiving. That draft means a lot, and so you have to go into the draft with a lot of information. You have to research the players in fantasy baseball and Magic. You have to know how to play Magic. You have to be familiar with the cards. In Settlers, you have to know some strategy. And so having games like this in Agricola, where you're, um, where you're picking, you're drafting, um, what are the two cards you draft at the beginning of Agricola? They're your workers and um, occupations, I think, and buildings, something like that. Th- that. That selection means so much that it's not welcoming to new players at all. And if you have a table of experienced players, it's not welcome to, as welcome to inexperienced players. It's tough when you have to start out a game with a decision when you don't know how to play the game. So that that's another comparison to fantasy baseball. It would not be all that fun to draft in fantasy baseball if you didn't know uh, the value of the players. Now, there is one way to get around that, and Magic actually does this pretty well. It's to have some sort of ranking system to let players know that this card is, in general more valuable than other cards or in fantasy baseball this player is pre-ranked um so you know that it's in general more valuable than other players this is a great way to bring new players into the game or more or less experienced gamers into the game because when they're not able to make a decision especially early in the draft they can just look and see okay this guy is ranked number two and this card or this player is ranked number 50 even though I don't really know what these cards do yet, I know that two is better than 50, so I'll take that one. And so even throughout the draft, there's a learning process, a learning curve of uh, the longer the, the draft goes on, the less a new player will have to base their picks off of that ranking, and the more they can start to make small strategic decisions. So I think the idea of having some sort of ranking system on cards in a game where you have a lot of decisions made up front can go a long way. I think there are a lot of other games that use this type of mechanism where you're you're building an engine and not necessarily getting to use that engine all that much. Or maybe you do, but uh, like I, I've said, I would play fantasy baseball if I could just draft a new team every week and and just to have that draft experience and then play for a little bit, but then go back to that draft experience. So I like the idea of a game that would really focus on that building portion and then just have a little bit of execution. Um, so if you have any other game suggestions that, that do this or game ideas that could encapsulate this experience, I'd love to hear about them in the comments. Thanks.